Welcome back to Saga of Three Kings, this is session number seven. Bees on the bridge, or are they bees? Um, the group last time uh, fought a bunch of strange uh, ant lions, or big, massive um, ankegs, as they're also known as. Um, creatures that rose up out of the dirt and fought them. Uh, they took a long rest, during which they um, discovered the nature of these strange totems and destroyed them. And then they have woken up in the morning following. Uh, well rested and no longer cursed by the totems. Um, the plan initially was to move on to the bridge that was discussed by Talith, who is still with you. Um, as you can see, there are two avenues to get to the bridge. You can either move up the riverway or you can follow the road and then move up to the bridge properly on the road, uh, the old road that's in between the tree line there. Which would you like to do? Road. I'm going to say road, too. Seems easier to travel. And my Peter. Sure. Yeah, road's probably easier. Okay. Can we take the wagon from the camp? And can the elk pull it? Um, hold on a second. Bear with me here. The wagon... At the, I don't remember there being a wagon. It's on the trail over to the left in front of the untouched house with the dead woman inside of it. It wasn't large, but it's enough to carry two or three people. Yeah, I think that it was in disrepair. Let me check my notes. Hold on. Thank you for being patient. Definitely a side... Okay, yeah, the one that, that had the, um, the barrels in it, that was uh, delivery from uh, town. Um, I'd say it's serviceable, um, but there's no barding. It looks like whatever animal was attached to it, uh, the kit that would have been used to bind it to the uh, wagon has been removed. We've got rope. How patient is that elk? You talk him down? <laughs> yeah, are we trying to hook him up to the wagon? Is that the plan? If you and the elk allow it. Yeah, I don't see why not. What are we trying to load on the wagon? Slower people, just so we have a wagon. Okay. Honey. So much honey. Yeah, there's Whatever a, wasps have. <laughs> there is a barrel on the wagon already. Um, and, uh, it does look like it is in kind of a, not as good a state, but definitely serviceable work. It, it's definitely in a working state. Um, just not pristine. Uh, the barrel on the back of it looks like it's been kind of bolted in place. Um, and, uh, based on your judgment on trying to move the wagon, uh, the barrel still filled with something. I crack it open. Okay, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. And um, you all see the contents spill out, kind of like a sludgish brown colored um, mass of fluid. Um, the scent that gets you is just kind of like a, a heady, kind of rotted smell. Uh, basically, the smell of um, the like when beer is kind of left out um, in the sun. It has a very. Um, uh, for weeks. Yeah. It has a very um, distinct, uh, almost vinegary, kind of sour, like a soured beer smell. It's going to be strong. Someone should drink this. I've got an 18 on that roll. Yeah, hence the constitution saving throw. But yeah, you are able to stomach the smell. You've smelled worse. Um, it's definitely different smelling something like this in your new um, with your new nose. But um, yeah, it's something you can stomach. Got that new sensitive elf nose. Gotta be careful with it. Cause you're an elf now. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Bet that sucks. So as soon as we drink this barrel down, this can be Benson's kitty seat. Well, most of it spills out when you break it off, like when you open it. Um, it seems like the like it was fermenting and burst the, out. The only way that you could have opened it was opening the um, the side panels, the or the tops. And the tops are on their side. The barrel was bolted 
um, side long. So like the round of it is set settled inside of like uh, kind of like the bolts. No so, tap. No, no tap. bung. No bung. Nothing. How did they get it in there? It looks like it was uh, sealed. The uh, barrel lid that you pulled off. Cool. Well, we've got a secret compartment now in a cool new wagon. Well, certainly not secret. Yeah. It's definitely sitting right there on the, the back of the wagon. No, no, it's it's, what's inside is a secret. Fair enough. I guess that's true. It's a noticeable compartment for secrets. <laughs> for things that may not be what in a, is normally in a barrel. Like um, Benson. Right. And me. Yeah, yeah. Could shove a scarecrow in there, smelling of sour, rotten beer. Um, I smelled worse. <laughs> Fair, fair. Um, so the wagon, the road, and you're heading north. Um, based on that, go ahead and roll me 1d20 roll for uh, random encounter time. Whoever you want to do it. Grok is... Mascot now. I rolled a 6. Oh, okay. Team Riot now. Way to go. <laughs> Six is fine. All right. So you make it to um, a point where you're kind of exiting out of the old road, and you can see the Cienos River out from the uh, small patch of forest that you're exiting through. Uh, based on what you can see from this perspective, the bridge kind of runs sidelong uh, across the river uh, at a very narrow point where the river kind of runs due north. Uh, based on what you can see from here, um, pretty far distance away, uh, the bridge is a covered bridge. But the covering looks like it has broken pa uh, panels, like wood uh, slats were kind of set up to kind of create a rounded cover, and some of them have been broken off. You can also see what looks like a dozen or more um, large uh, creatures um, kind of flying around the bridge. Um, some of them coming out of the forest near to the north of you um, and heading towards the bridge. Um, the creatures that you see do look like they are wasp-like. Uh, however, um, yeah, very, very different than what you were expecting to see here, Grok. Go ahead and make me a nature check uh, to see if you can kind of think you might be able to figure out what's going on here. Alrighty. I rolled a 12. The one thing you know for sure is that they're not natural. Um, they are certainly not a normal creature. They seem to be some sort of strange, twisted hybrid uh, between um, what you would have expected to see. Large giant hornets or giant bees. Um, they don't appear to be either, but they have characteristics of both. And they certainly look more fiendish. Like They look, mm. they look like dire creatures. Hmm. There are natural abominations. Perhaps. They're basps. Bee wasps, wasps. All right. Not true. Is that real? Maybe. I don't know. It is now. <laughs> so, that said, uh, the bridge uh, total length, uh, it crosses, like I said, at a, a narrower point on the uh, river, which is only about 100 feet wide. Most areas for the river uh, are anywhere between 400 to 1,000 feet wide. It's a pretty massive river. So this is a very narrow choke point, um, and you would assume that it's very deep. Um, underneath the bridge. Probably also why there's a necessity for a bridge instead of a four day. How um, far across is it from one shore to the other? 100 feet. 100 feet. And how high is the bridge above the water? Um, it starts out um, on uh, ground level. It seems that it's connected with um, the dirt, and there's like dirt mounds that kind of reach up to the first portion. And then the wood bridge uh, seems to rise to a point where it's about. 20 feet above the uh, water at its uh, and the, apex. And the flying creatures above the bridge? There are several. Uh, there's about a dozen of them kind of flying around the bridge. Mm -hmm. Do we no. see signs of a, of a hive? Anything like that? Go ahead and make a perception check. Um, see if you can't see anything strange or um, out of character. 20. Beautiful. The uh, bridge, like I said, it's kind of got like a cover to it. And then there's the railing, and like the uh, part in between seems like it has several posts that hold up the uh, cover portion. You th 
look at it and are trying to see if like through the bridge and you can't, it seems that there's some sort of substance that's kind of set in between the posts. Honey. Um, you also notice that there seems to be kind of like a uh, large kind of grayish matter on the bottom of the bridge um, that kind of extends out uh, from the wood. Um, and uh, it has a very similar look to what you'd expect from like a beehive or a wasp's nest. Kind of like grayish um, matter. Like mud daubers. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Roderick used to keep bees out on the farm. Didn't last long. Too many stings. Something about smoke keeping them docile, though, while he collected the honey. Maybe we should set it on fire. Grok can create a bonfire. Can also hold well, my breath not underwater burn the for a long time. Or everyone's best friend here. <laughs> <laughs> Again. I don't intend to burn Roderick. Is it like a the gray matter? Is it like a big? Like how big is it? It seems to kind of extend from um, about twenty feet away from the shore to the other side, about twenty feet away from the shore, and it covers the entire bottom. And that's the only part of the gray matter that you can see. It's on the under. It's on the underside of the bridge. Okay, so it's quite big. Smoke them out. You said the river's flowing south? Uh, correct. How how fast is it flowing? Um, pretty fast in this area because it's uh, narrowing as a bottleneck. And if, so you, it, if you want, would, go, ahead, go ahead and make another nature check. Um, might be a good one here. Sure. Uh, crit, 22. So a common property uh, for waterways in the Modus region is that some of uh, the rivers that you're aware of, um, you know, are well enough, but some of them have divergences that go underground, and they have a number of different um, areas where there are underwater or underground rivers. Uh, once the most known one um, is uh, known as the Dragon's Way, which at the Cianos near the bottom of the Anguis uh, goes down in through and under the Anguis, and then reappears near the Byron's Wood. So you can kind of see that there, there's like a river that just starts up kind of south of where you're located. It's not that it's just starting up. It's that it's, that's where it actually becomes manifest outside of the underbelly, outside of uh, the under, uh, under well, underground river. Mm -hmm. This area here um, is near um, effectively a honeycomb of water passageways because it diverges out from a lake to the north, um, Lake Jalita. And... Because of the force of the water, in some softer portions, like here, um, the water has created its own small avenues and uh, underwater caves. The depth of this area and the area's region, you're certain that if you were to get caught in the undertow, get caught in the water and forced down, it may not be the case that you're lucky enough to make it to the surface or you're pushed off to the side, you may be pulled into one of those holes. Okay. How far out are we where we're noticing the dozen or so bees? I'd say 500 or so feet. You're a good ways away. So if we can draw the bee, the, the, the bees off, the wasps off, the bridge, um, I, I, I could, um, well, I'm not sure exactly. If, if I set a fire, I might, fi I might burn the whole bridge down, but I can probably burn the, the wasps' nest. Yes. The bridge is made of wood. Right, I understand. Or we can charge across to the other side of the bridge and then try to do it from there as they're running after us. So, Could try to bait out a few of the drones. Deal with them in smaller numbers. That's true. No bees have a hive mentality. Aren't they like all gonna come? Probably. If they sting us, and they'll give off that toxin. Well, if they sting us, I'm allergic. I might have to cut this one out. Sit this one out. Stay behind me. Are you genuinely saying Leon is allergic to bees? <laughs> no. Oh. oh, that would be a great thing. Gain a flaw. <laughs> Vulnerability. Bees. <laughs> I like the idea of hiding behind shambles, and the giant wasp finger just goes right through them and still hits you. <laughs> it's pretty you funny. Both get wrecked. <laughs> Futurama. 
Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, based on what you can tell um, with that role as well uh, Grok kind of rethinking it based on everything you've seen um, if there is, if this is a hive um, which very much looks like it is the queen is probably dead center if there is one mm -hmm. if we take the queen hostage they'll have to surrender are we going to try to infiltrate, like, is it big enough that we could, like, infiltrate the hive, or are we trying to, like, light it on fire so that it draws them out? It's a bridge. So the bridge is 20 feet wide, and it's at its highest point. It kind of arches 20 feet off of the water, and its entire height throughout the arch of it is probably about 20 feet itself. So your presumption is that it is filled with four to five foot long bees or wasps, whatever you want to call them. Um, inside of the bridge portion. So, do we... I just ask, do we actually need the bridge? We need a secure route to Mortis. Ah, well, up to, yeah, like, the bridge connects uh, to that town, and that town is a town. That People town is live vacant. there. Yeah, it's, it's been abandoned, but, like, if we... If, that people ever wanted so, to retake it, they probably if need we this set bridge. That bridge on fire. We're probably only going to burn the top of it since the rest is in the water. It's constantly wicking water. The frame would probably still be standing. It could it's be above rebuilt. water. It's above water. It's a high fire for damage. Is, yeah, he the said post it was 20 feet above. Be set in the water. Right, right. So those are oh, okay. So we only have water. to rebuild most of the bridge. You only have to rebuild the top of the bridge. The bridge There's a loggers camp not far from here, and nobody's doing anything there. So yeah, free nobody's wood. cutting down wood, right? <laughs> There's a shit ton of wood there. Yeah, that's free real estate. Nice. Well, if we don't have any other uh, volunteers, is the water? I guess I could approach. <laughs> Yeah, is the water crushing hard enough, like against rocks and stuff? It's producing a mist around the ridge, or is it pretty clear? Pretty clear. If we're just wanting to burn it up, I mean, I could always cast Fireball on it. But think of the honey, Benson. The That's valuable true. honey. That's, yeah. Uh, the I'm, hive itself yeah, is true. probably not flammable, so we're going to need to get tender into a hole in the thing to produce a smoke queen's fortune. and push it through. I'm going to light my pipe. Keep that fireball handy, Benson. We might need it later. <laughs> if too many of us oh. get poisoned. How many is too many? That's right. Burn the body. Which way is the wind blowing? Any of Good question. The wind is blowing westerly. Hey. Get those bonfires going, fellas. Smoke them out. Smoke them if you got them. Already doing it. And Shambles, this is strangely easy for you to track because as you're kind of investigating the bridge, you notice that in the center point there's a flagpole and there's the remnants of a flag still in the wind. Do I recognize the colors? or They seem to be kind of blanched a bit. Um, like this flag has been here for a long time in the sunlight. Um, sure. It looks like the original colors might have been kind of a green, a bright green. Shambles nice. always knows which way the wind is blowing because he's made of hay. Uh, uh, just always falling down. I am constantly fighting the. Uh, you just stand still. Classic. Anything more than three miles an hour, I am gripping the ground. <laughs> just. Oh, like Jesus! Oh yeah. I recommend we get some. Uh, get some wet tinder and uh, start a bonfire and smoke them out. Yeah. Like Raya said, bees don't care for it. I, I could create a bonfire um, right away if you want. You want to? Do we need smoke? Then yeah, we'll make a bonfire and then just throw a shit ton of leaves and shit on it. Just like if there's pine needles. We're perking north. There's probably pine needles. Um, just throw pine needles and leaves and anything to make a nice black smoke. And dip shambles in the river. <laughs> throw Again, them across it. We don't need to burn shambles. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. That avenue's been explored. I'll start uh, okay. gathering up some, some greenery. Yeah. And Where should we set the bonfire? It, it recently just rained, as you're aware, uh, especially in this area up near Phalanx. So you're able to find some wet tinder 
um, wet with twigs and the like. Um, some of it looks like it might be suitable for burning, but still has a decent amount of uh, moisture to it. Let's get as far away from it as we can, but as close as we can also, and start a fire, and then just keep throwing stuff on it. I'm kind of trying to make sure the smoke billows in that direction. Yeah. Try to cover the bridge. Okay. So go ahead and um, who is running primary on the smoke out the bees technique? Does um, we have either Grok? Do you have Druidcraft? Because in yep. Druidcraft, you can make a little puff of wind or something to help direct it. I do not have uh, Druidcraft, um, but I do have Create Bonfire, so that's kind of the best create I can bonfire, do. Create Bonfire, you know, wouldn't help uh, because it does not create a substantial flame. It creates fire, magical fire that does not ignite objects. So I, really? Create Bonfire does did. not does not. I think you and that's something a really else shitty spell. And how I can burn those cast. totems? It's not a shitty spell. I can cast. Because it allows you to basically create a five foot wide block to anything that's attempting to try and pass through it. Oh, wait, oh, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. Incorrect. It does ignite flammable objects. I'm a liar. I am a horrible person. It says right there on the spell. Yeah, so I have tinderbox and oil, so like we can start it and then... Yeah, so you could keep throwing the wet stuff on. I yeah. have a scarf. I can foul fan it. But I, I guess for digitation. That's really... Yeah, I don't remember it saying that. Maybe they changed it from Elemental Evil to uh, Xanathar's, I guess. I could have sworn, because I know I've used the light stuff before. Yeah, I like, think... Start it, and then you'd have to build an actual fire on top well, of it. Well, when we were running it... save you from having to try to start one. When we were running it out of Elemental Evil, and Xanathar's wasn't released back in Moon's Remorse days... Chody had both, and we had this argument before. It's the only reason I'm remembering it. So I must, I, I guess I have to go back and check the elemental evil and see if I was wrong that time. But I don't remember creating bonfires, starting fires. It makes sense that it does. But yeah. It's, that's fine. So you're going to create a bonfire. You're going to start a fire with this wet twin, uh, tinder. And uh, you're going to try and billow the smoke into and around the bridge, right? I think that's the idea. Who's the leader of the activity? Nature boys. Looking at turtle and out guy. Sure. How do you I mean, mean leader of the activity? Who's the one that's basically organizing the plan? Everybody said the plan. Shambles, uh, um, Zach the player was the one who came up with the plan. I'm asking which player character is the one who's like, this is how we've got to do all this shit. I think it's probably going to be Grok. Cause he's it feels the like a Grok thing. Okay, so you're going to be... Uh, are you trained in survival? Uh, I would also like Yes, to, I am. Okay. I would like to talk to Grok about it and let him know that I would like to guide him by casting guidance. That would be well, awesome, perfect. Benson. Now, is anyone else in the party trained in survival? You could aid. You could help no. yes. give me nope. advantage. Okay. So I'm trained in it. You have people who are trained in survival who are helping you with the process, so you have advantage. And you add a D4 to the roll. So go ahead and make a survival check for Operation Smoke Em Out. Wow. Add yeah, the D4 good. anyways. I want, I want more. Okay. okay, so 25. Perfect. It's the exact DC he required. You managed Woo! to get a column of smoke billowing in a fashion low to the ground and out in that direction so that it actually connects from about 100 or 150 feet away. It actually connects with the bridge and seems to kind of be entering into the bridge. You notice that the wasps and stuff that are kind of circling on the outside move into the hive. There are no, right. there are no, no outlying bees outside of the hive. We got a bottleneck, let's go get them. And now we throw fireballs at the hive when they're all inside, right? Just make this fire permanent, leave it Do here it. forever, and you'll <laughs> never have a problem. Right. So we're going to go choo -choo. under the cover of the smoke. We'll approach. You know, eat two shambles fireballs up at front. it. Okay. Shambles up front, you said? Yes. Okay. So as you approach Shambles, you can see inside of the bridge, you can see one massive wasp kind of sitting close to what appears to be kind of a waxy wall with a uh, kind of comish looking structure to it. Um, the thing that you notice immediately is that inside of this uh, structure, this wax kind of like comb, um, it seems to have been built in kind of a humanoid shape. Disgusting. Oh. 
That's the thing he was talking about before. It's a humanoid shape. Like something humanoid was either like they, they, they made it in a humanoid shape on purpose or they created a honeycomb in the shape of a human or there's a human in that honeycomb. Mm. I'm taking the hide action in the smoke. Uh, I see only one wasp. Um, with your perception, I'd say you'd see about two more. Did anybody follow me onto the bridge? I did, and I took the hide action. Croc would follow Shambles onto the bridge. I would be. I, I'd stealth up with Raya. Seems like a good idea. Okay. So you've got. I'll give, the, I'll give like the thumbs up. Like it, it's time for bees. <laughs> it's time for bees. That's the what condition is. I, I give you. I do some hand canting to agree. I just give. I'm going to assume that's <laughs> affirmative. <laughs> Come on, Stampy. Get ready to stamp. Okay. What condition what, Jeremy? What's the condition of the bridge? Pretty strong, uh, other than the weird coverings. As you kind of look in further, though, it's kind of dark, but not like pitch black. There seems to be light coming from above. But the back wall seems to be, or the back area where you would presume bridge continues on, is a wall of wax. It, too, has several humanoid-like frames. Uh, some child shaped, some. Larger. Yeah, we gotta help these people. Already if we're bad. quick, we could. No one, no one knows. We don't know. Shut up, Raya. <laughs> We've been missing for weeks. Shut up, Raya. And surviving on honey. <laughs> it could you know, be honey is nutritious. Honey. It is. Yeah. Anyone yeah. eats the people, it's honey, you're dead. It's sugar to break down. <laughs> Baby bees are totally coming out of somebody's chest, I'm just saying. As I approach the <laughs> wall, I'm going to my rapier. Aliens. I heard you. You draw your rapier. I'm running it around one of the smaller figures and letting it fall out. Well, let me go ahead and put you on the map. <laughs> Hold on. Ooh, I love the yellow. Man, it's a horror greater. Bonus action hide. Holy shit. That's better. Yeah, so we can't see that there's a thousand of them. What? There are like <laughs> 30. <laughs> what? So the ones that you can see are kind of like dow drowsy and are kind of like laying down. One up on the top wall there, near one of the uh, humanoid figures, is kind of just licking away at the uh, comb. Um, and they're pretty massive combs. Should we be able to see ourselves on this map right now? Yeah. Do you not? I can see far right. I no, I only see a black rectangle. Oh, oh hold on, I know why. Because you're new elf. Self suck. <laughs> it's still a little funny. It's just super funny because of now? who got it. That's the only reason. Why yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. So do you still want to move up to one of the shapes? Yes, there's a bonus action hide and try to cut around one and see if it falls out. Okay, there's not too many places to hide here, so you're just moving quietly no need for the bonus action. I um, can move inside, the, I can hide in the smoke as a wood elf. Yeah, there's plenty of smoke, uh, that's 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 fine, yeah. Um, so you move over to cut one of them out, there's nothing to cut out. Um, it seems like the uh, matter inside is kind of like a sticky brown uh, human-shaped fluid that's denser than the honey around it. Okay, yeah, point proven. Um, if Where you, is the I'll... wall? If Benson would like to make an arcana check at seeing that, he may. Where would I be standing at this point? Yep. Deep down there. I'd say nine. Right about there. Um, yeah, definitely strange, Benson. Not something you've seen before. The uh, wasps uh, seem to kind of look up at you with their, um, you know, insectoid eyes, but they don't seem to kind of move towards you as the smoke kind of comes through. It seems to have a strangely calming effect on them. 
good. These Come are on. all on the ceiling, you said? Yeah, Oopta Grace it? Nope. It's on the ground. And then the one that's south of him is on the wall. One of the north of him is on the wall. And the one to the north uh, west of him is also on the wall. Oopta Grace? Yeah, if it's an option. Yeah, you can make an attack moral against it. The one behind me. Mm hmm. Um, I guess, tell me if I'm hidden or not. For yeah. the... um, well, you just make an attack roll when you're trying to attack. Eleven, the creature. 11 to hit. So it ablates off of the armor. Um, it's definitely a lot more solid than you anticipated. You look at it and it's like, oh, it's a bug. It should be able to just. And then it feels like it's a solid kind of lacquer covering around the creature. And the second huh. the blade kind of flicks and dashes off of it, um, you see it kind of look at you more thoroughly. And then you see what appears to be a small little red kind of pulsing light appear on its forehead. The same holds true of the one on the wall behind you. And they all seem to have this red light start kind of blinking. Oh, no. Then you hear a... <laughs> from the center of the Air bridge. Bombs. Go ahead and make a... Uh, Initiative roll. Hold on, don't make it yet. Okay, now make it. Damn, al alarmo bees. <laughs> 18. Uh, I didn't have my token selected. It was a 10 the first time. Do you want me to use 10 or the 18? It doesn't matter to me. Well, the the worst initiative. I don't know if it would make a difference. Never mind. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. Everybody rolled? Yes. All right. Uh, Brian, you're first. Um, it definitely looks like it is kind of focusing in on you a little bit more closely. Clear and uh, cl clearly, um, like it's not as affected by the smoke as you'd hoped. Am I able to step over them? They're pretty big. You got to go around them. Okay. And disengage includes you from all enemies, right? Bonus action disengage. Yeah. Okay. And I will disengage and bonus action hide in the smoke, getting back in line. Now, a quick note for the combat. If you do try to uh, move beyond the map's border, the second you kind of get past the edge there, you won't be able to see into the bridge. So you can see the outside of the bridge, but you won't be able to see the inside. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. Because it kind of descends down and then into the bridge. All right. The um, wasps, you can definitely hear a cacophony of kind of buzzing sound come from the outside of the bridge. Wait, Sounds Jeremy, did you, what did you do on your turn? Disengage, bonus action, hide. Oh my god. Coward. <laughs> They're pretty big bees. <laughs> Wakes up the bees. Oh shit. Run, woke them up, runs away. Nice job. Good luck, right. gang. Good luck, guys. You notice that the back wall starts to kind of bulge and bubble, and the human-type kind of frames seem to be kind of moving awkwardly. The bees inside of the chamber fly straight in at the first two available targets. They kind of buzz above you and then swing in hard with their tail. Uh, nine to hit shambles, and a crit hits. on shambles. Probably hits. Yeah, you'll take twenty-eight points of. No, sorry. You'll take eight points of piercing damage, and then make a Constitution saving throw. Hey, John. Seventeen. Ten poison. We're short on NPC. Yeah, I know. As I was looking at the initiative, she, she, she would be right here, you know, right beside me. She's a frontliner. 
Uh, or... resistance to poison damage, I take half poison. So you take five if you have resistance to poison, yeah. Okay. She's feeding the fire and keeping the smoke going. There you go. That, that was an option. Perfect. Thank you. Had I not remembered her missing, I was going to run back and do that on the next turn. I'll let you guys fight these bees. <laughs> but let's have the NPC do it. So there's Oh no, no, the fire's going out. I got it, guys. Bye. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Two more wasps um, for the Gonda. 11 misses, 12 misses. Okay, um, as the uh, bee stings into you, and you kind of feel it, but not like terribly so, it kind of like twists to the side. Uh, you notice that the stinger has basically kind of remained, but it seems to kind of hold a bit free from the, um, the back end. All right, um, and it definitely sounds like the outside walls are covered with more of these uh, wasps. Uh, Chody? Hey, um, <clears throat> trying to see what I'm doing here. Um, shambles, is that better or is your unarmed defense better? Oh, oh, I see what you're talking about. Right. Uh, yeah. It would be the same. It would be, be the same. same. What about yeah. uh, Raya? Raya, mm -hmm. do, you have, do you wear armor? Barely. I, well, then if you wear armor, I can't do it. Okay, um, I'm just going to go... Are you talking about mage armor? Yeah. You can cast it on someone who's wearing armor. They just don't get the benefit of both. They get the benefit of either mage armor or the non-mage armor. Oh. I would cast okay. it on yourself, because I need you alive. <laughs> yeah, really. Cast it on yourself. Or just kill some bees. Um, either or. I, I like the killing bees part. Uh, I am going to go ahead and, uh, chill touch the one in front of me. Okay. No, no, they can't be wearing armor. You touch a creature that isn't wearing armor. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I thought it jumped over other armor. Okay. Yeah, that hits. Nope. Six. And cold damage? On oh, necrotic. Yeah. Necrotic. Necrotic. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Seems to be fine. Um, definitely works the way you want it to. Uh, wounds the uh, bee, but does not kill it outright. Gondar. Blow it down some because it's cold. Well, no, it's not cold. It's necrotic. Never mind. Yeah. Go ahead. You won't be able to heal. What a poorly named spell. Everybody <laughs> says that, and I disagree. Gondar. <laughs> oh, jeez. Which one did um, got mage handed? Oh, well, I can't focus fire that one. Chill touch. Or that yeah, one. chill touch. Yeah, that's too far away. I can't. Our mage does not have mage hand. Yeah, Sorry. there's a lot of. He finds it super fun. <laughs> I have a lot of questions, but whatever. Kill He's bees. already handsy. He doesn't need mage hand. Kill bees. Bits in the corner. I already got two hands. I stab this bee. Where are Hiya. you? Are you in like a. <laughs> Why is all that yelling in the background? <laughs> They're playing Mario Party and dance oh. something downstairs. Okay. Yeah, that hits. That does damage. Eight damage to this piece. He's still Ooh, alive. He's hurting. Yeah, he's hurting. Hey, uh, he's. I kill. I kill. Hey, y'all. Um, five piercing. Sir. Yeah. On the nose. That's a dead. Bee, uh, dead bee slashes it back. Haha, uh -huh, it's one for me. Try to keep up, fellas. I end my turn. Good answer. Good answer. All right. Uh, shambles. I'm gonna go for this one to the very north. Eleven. We'll miss. Yeah, we'll miss. Uh, I'm gonna jump kick it for twenty-one. That'll work. Eight bludgeoning. The same one that got chill touched. Yes, I'm assuming he got the northern one. Yep, that'll work. And flurry of blows to kick this one directly to my left. Okay. Twenty-five to hit six and. Open hand technique to attempt to stun. Oh, okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. That's a lot of key points right off the bat. Wisdom saving throw? Put I don't spend another key point, do I? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, sorry. It's just I thought you said, off to, of flurry to, you said to stun. To stun. That's what confused me. You're not stunning anything with that ability. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Knock it prone, I meant. Yeah. Apologies. So, strength saving throw. 
it manages to stay afloat. Okay, so you uh, punch in, cruddy, spin kick, kick some more, flying kicks, and land. That one gets knocked down a little bit, but still kind of hovers near you. All right, Leon. Look. Guess I am taking a bow shot at the nearest bee. Okay. Or can I? Is this going to be like disadvantage fight this one? Um, you, you'd be fine with Range. that. Range? No, yeah, you're fine with that. Okay. It hits. Uh, you skewer it, and it slams against the wall. Stuck. Nice shot. Alright. As your turn concludes, you hear outside that uh, the elk kind of makes like a screech sound. And it looks like it's engaged with about four of them. Maybe about ten, so, ten or so feet back. Seems it's kind of fighting those four. Well, is Tarith helping it? Uh, Talith is a little ways back. Um, she sees that's happening, and it looks like in this turn she's getting up and moving away from the fire to go help the elk. She's kind of like <laughs> yell for the elk to just fuck off. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. All right. The uh, weird waxy wall in front of you breaks out from in front of you. You watch as it uh, looks like four of the drones kind of like push it aside. And as they kind of circle away, this massive, massive fucking thing kind of flies straight through. Huge swords for talons on the front um, bits of it. Swords for talons? It doesn't even look like Jeez. A, it doesn't even look like a creature that is of this world. And as it flies straight in and swings in, it seems to be yelling um, something in a strange language. Um, yeah, um, it attacks. Is it screaming or is it dancing in a strange language? It's uh, screaming. Screaming. Okay, just checking. What's the normal B? <laughs> Does it look like the bee from Earthworm Jim? No. Um, okay, 20 Good throwback though. 23 to hit Shambles with the Sword Talon, and uh, 24 to hit Gondar with the Sword Talon, and 20, Barely hits. 26 to hit Gondar with a Sting. So take 8 points of slashing damage, um, Shambles, 7 points, I'm oh, sorry, piercing damage, piercing damage. Uh, seven points of piercing damage, uh, Gondar. And then for the sting, um, you'll take two points of fire damage. And I need a constitution saving throw. We need to kill this bee. Uh, Fifteen. Success. You feel poison kind of course into your veins. It kind of causes you to slow up a bit. You kind of like try to focus in and uh, sweat starts to bead on your brow um, from the sting. And you... Uh, Managed to keep it under control. Alright, so seven slashing, two fire, and then any additional poison, or was the poison just for that effect? Just for the effect. You, fa you passed the save, so it didn't take hold. Ow. Ow. Next up is Grok. Grok. Grok, um... He makes a motion and he whispers something. He, he casts protection from poison on himself. Mm -hmm. And then as a bonus action, he's going to raid. Okay. That's really all I can do at the moment. Now are you going to move up? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'll move up. I'll, do, I'll tank a little. Okay. Good choice, because had you not, you would have just lost your rage. Okay. See, I, yeah, I have to barb. I have to learn how to barb. Riot. I will. I don't know. Drop my rapier and shoot the big guy. Okay. Nine. Miss. No shit. Remember not to burn the bridge. 
<laughs> are you saying are you saying we should have burned the bridge? I still think we should burn the bridge. I feel strongly we shouldn't burn the bridge. I feel <laughs> Don't burn any bridges. This is uh, a Foster Clock. Oh my god. Looks like an absolute beauty if I was yeah. a oh, yeah, level no, wizard I'm, right now. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. The dream they start, come god. True. They start piercing in through the side walls and kind of coming through the wax therein. Uh, bits of the honey kind of slap down and you can see the splash of the brown humanoid shapes kind of splurting onto the, the wood uh, panels of the bridge. The massive bee in the center is kind of like focused um, and kind of intense on Gondar for some reason. And the others are kind of like circling around it in kind of like a protective pattern. Um, once they all fly in, they all start kind of stinging in general directions. Uh, looks like I've got two on Shambles, one on Benson, one, two on Ga Grok, and one on Gondar. Three on Grok. Grok. All right. Don't die. Don't die. Working on it. So for the three on Grok, uh, one hits. Take four piercing damage, have it, and since you cast um, protection from poison, you're immune or resistant to poison? Resistant. Okay, so you'll take uh, six points of poison. So that's halved? Yeah, 13 was the max. Oh, sorry. Okay, so eight... uh, constitution saving throw, sorry. Um, you have I have advantage on yeah. that, yeah. Oh, I saved. Okay, so you'll take half of 13, which is 6, and then half of 6 because of the resistance, which is 3. So in addition to the 8? No, 4 plus 3. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. 7 total. Okay, 7. Got it. Yeah. And then for Gondar, a miss, 2 on Chambles, uh, 16 misses, right? Yes. Okay. And 1 for Benson. Uh, 18 to hit Benson. Yeah. You'll take Still... six piercing and 12, or constitution saving throw. Kill the queen. 15. Or whatever the fuck that is. You'll take six poison. So how much total? 12. It was six and six. 12. Got it. Um, and it looks like there's a shit ton of them now in formations there. Maybe time. Uh, Chubby. Yeah! So, uh, he starts doing a little dance as the fire starts coming around his fingers, and he says that as fire cleanses the metal in the forge, I will cleanse this world for you, and then I throw a fireball. Okay. Go ahead and roll the damage. Twenty-eight. Okay. Give me a second. Um, Steve, can Grok do that with a necklace while he's... So, for you to not hit your allies, it's going to be... There. It won't... Um, it won't touch... If you move it to the right and up one. Yeah, you got these all. Okay. All of them besides the ones in this group here. The ones that are adjacent to uh, opponents. Then he won't hit the ones in the bottom corner down here. The best bet is to take the whole line back and ignore the five that are in the in the melee already. Or um, let's see. Saving throws. I'm really sorry. I didn't roll a single failure. Um, so, 14. So you notice that they appear to be resistant to fire. Uh, like there's something about them that is just 
not particularly um, damaged by fire. Some sort of, now that you're looking at it, fiendish nature. The massive queen doesn't take any of the fire damage. All right. Oh no. Not it's bad. time to leave. It's time to stop. <laughs> Okay. Th just throw more fireballs. One. They all look like they're very wounded, with the exception of the, uh, the leader. All right, uh, Gondor. Uh, stab this thing. Go. He didn't get fired, so I'm gonna fire him with a, a knife. And I critted him that for one. that much damage. Yeah, worry about the math. It's dead. And then I'll this one. I'll, I'll, I'll still give uh, Shambles a break. And nah, pour him on me. Uh, five to this one. Still barely hanging on. Alright. That was. Yep, I'm good. Shambles? I hope. It did get hit, but um, it didn't get hit enough. Sure. Uh, attack the one that's going after Benson. Okay. With the sword. 13 to hit. hit. It does? Yep. Uh, 10 piercing to hit. Yep. Uh, followed up with an unarmed strike. Hit. 23 to hit. 17 total. You stab the sword him. into it and then punch the thing off the blade. It slams into the wall with a splatter. Yeah. I am going to try to take its place if I can. Yep. Uh, try to wall Benson off. Yep. And I'll... Flurry of blows, try to kick that one that was still just hanging on. Okay. Crit. Yep. Um, you kick it, it flies out like a good 20 feet over the hell <clears throat> or the center hell wasp and way off to the uh, outside. Um, is handing something to someone that's a bonus action, right? So you can be prepared to hand something off to someone for free. But them to take it from you is an action. It's a full action? Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. Well, as long... I, I suppose it'd be an item interaction, like they're drawing it from themselves. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I try to... Oh, I don't know if I'm going to do this or not. Um, I'm going to wait. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Shambles is done. Kevin, Leon's up. Yeah. God. I guess I'll try and save Grok, but I think I should probably focus on this thing. Do we uh, is Hunter's Mark a bonus action? It is. Alright, so Hunter's Mark, the big thing. Okay. And then... Are you Hunter's Marking or Slayer's Marking? Hunter's Mark, because I have to do one first, right? Right. I can't do both at once. Correct. I was just making sure we knew which one you were utilizing. Okay. And then I'm going to try and sharpshooter the okay. shot. 20. Minus what? Five. Five. So it misses. It hits the armor and kind of just sticks into it, but it doesn't seem to pierce the heavy carapace of this uh, queen. Rip. All right. It goes to it. It's going to blade talons into uh, Grok. Both hit. Take 25 points of piercing damage as it cuts into you with its uh, claws. And that is halved? Uh, you're raging, yeah. So, so that's, that's it'll be 5 and 7, so 12. Okay. I will try to hand Vincent, or not Vincent, uh, shamble something if he wants to take it uh, uh, vile of Okay. What, by the what? <laughs> it's a clear liquid with a fingernail in it. Gross. Ew. You should drink Why? it. Because <laughs> um, it'll make you cool. Yuck. Alright. That's it for it. Um, it'll go to Grok. 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 He is going to use a bonus action. Uh, to turn into a dire wolf. Can you make that? Um, 
Or should I just stay as Grok and then just roll as a dire? You're, you can, I can, uh, whatchamacallit, if it's gonna take up this space, I can get shoved down here. Um, if that needs to happen. Because you're gonna become a large creature, I believe. Yep. Uh, oh, not, uh, yeah, sorry, wrong one. So yeah, if, John, if you need me to shove down here, I can do that. That'll be what happens, yeah. Good answer, good answer. So, um, Dire Rock has pack tactics, so I have advantage on attacks because I have an ally within five feet. Who's right? your ally? Um, isn't my ally Gondor? Gondor's not adjacent to the Hell Wasp. Oh, it has to be adjacent to the Wasp? Uh huh. Gar, I'm gonna bite. I'm gonna bite you, 24. Eight That'll piercing. Work. Okay. Um, and then if the creature must succeed on a D13 strength save or be knocked prone. I got a 27. Okay. Barely. Wow. Okay, muscular and, B over here. Hold on. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> you hit it with a natural attack. Take five points of fire damage. And is that halved? Why would it be halved? Five is half, or, or half of that? You don't get half damage. It's fire. Oh, okay. Is the wolf angry? Like, is it still raging? It's raging, yeah. Yeah. So do you get your rage bonus on your bite? Oh, I do. So I that would be ten piercing. Yep. All right. Grok's done. Rise up. I shoot an arrow to be... Holy shit, I might have hit something. It, the, the B or the big B? B. Ping it. Okay. I just assumed I was going to roll another five. Fair. It hits, it does damage. Yeah. So, like. Ten. All right. Wabba, wabba, wabba. Now we get to go into 3D mode. Sorry, bear with me here. It's a wolf. I see what you did there. Some, some dad jokes. Sweetness. Oh my god. Like, are we gonna survive this boy? T TBD. <laughs> Do you have another fireball in you? Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I, thought, uh, I thought Grok did. Didn't he, not, he didn't have that necklace? He, he's a dog now. Oh. Uh, let's see. Do dogs oh, not no. wear necklaces? Come on. It's up to him if it like became part of his body or if he's like wearing it around the dog's neck. Can't I can't do anything anyways. with One, two, three. Yeah, but like five. if it was around his neck, we could like grab it off him. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't worry, boys, I have a plan. Nine attacks into Grok. Woo, baby. If we take out the queen, they might scatter. That's what I'm going to try to do, but. <laughs> dice or dice. I hit with all of them besides one. Um, Go ahead and give me eight constitution saving throws, and then I'll give you the damage. <laughs> I use the dire wolves. Dire wolves, uh, yeah, no, yeah, for physical stats, yeah. What do I do? I just roll con. Yep. If you click on con. I 
Let's... You still have your protection from poison, right? I sure do. Good, good. You might be okay. We'll see. Might. All right. Did you... Okay. Uh, DC's 11, so uh, tell me how many of those that you saved. Three. Okay. I'll just do the highest three, make it easier. So physical damage you'll be taking um, after resistances, it will be 17 points of piercing damage. Okay. And the poison. A resistance to that. So no I more. double resistance. So, so the, it's for the, the, for the, the ones that are saved. You do not. Right. When you're raging, you only resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage unless you have a totem of the bear. You do not. Okay. So you're only resisting those three types. Uh oh. Cheating. It's so good. Uh oh, guys. Uh oh. Yeah, big uh oh. Uh oh. That's not a good word to come from the guy that told us he had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I have to survive to have the plan. So 15, 12, and 11 were my highest three, so that would mean uh, minus... So that, and then you are resisting poison damage, so you'll take half of the total, which will be 25 total, is the half. Okay. 25 is a half. Okay. So Grok falls out. You see that he falls out of the wild shape. You can be in any take... one of those four squares, by the way. You don't have to be in the uh, I could be in any. Yeah, you can be back a square. Oh, really? half. I could even move back. 50 was the total poison. Half uh, is 25. That would be low. 25, half of the total, or is it the total so of the So one more halves? time. 50 is the total of the poison that was dealt. 25 is the half. Okay, got it. No problem. So, um, Grok, you see him drop out of wild shape. You see his, he looks pretty bedraggled because he got smacked in his regular form as well. But I'm still standing. Quite could the do. sturdy fellow. I'm, I'm barely standing, though. Yeah, there. there's a bunch of beast stingers kind of like um, that were in your body before you melted away and that have kind of fallen to the ground. Those bees that are kind of up in the front their bee stingers were pulled and ripped out. It looks like they're no longer um, they no longer have a bee stinger. They did. They'll die in hours. <laughs> Jody? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the Miss Queen Bee over there, mm -hmm. and I'm going to mine Spiker. Okay. Wisdom saving throw? Yep. Uh, DC 14. Okay, I failed. Mine Spike does 15 Psychic damage. Yep. And for all intents and purposes, you always know where she's located. Alright, Gondar. It's literally B-City. Oh my god, there's B- Some of these looked scorched though, right? Um, all of, so, all of them. so many bees. At this point, all right. with the exception of like one, I think, in front of you. Uh, are the one behind you is basically singed. Gondor, I need you to stand in front of me so I could so I could be alive from my my turn. Wait, hold up. Um, you said this one is singed or is not? That one's not. Oh, oh. Well. I'm gonna get this guy. Okay. Um, Hit. that one. Will... Yep, that'll kill it. Then I'll, I'll, another one. That's there's, there's all pile on top of each other. Just I'm just stabbing bees there. Yep, go for it. Uh, yeah, six. Oh yeah. Um, uh, 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 action surge, stab. Okay. Like more crits. Oh my god. Lovely. Hi uh, bees, yeah. die. Starts. <laughs> I just start spinning. I'm just there's just knives. Just leave a Levi like style. Okay, do you step forward. You want to say it, Joe? Oh, I'm no, not gonna, if, you if you don't, don't stand in front of me, that's a big problem. Oh, this guy's gonna stab me as a reaction. 
If you move, yeah. That's what I was hoping you'd do, but you're smart. You're a smart boy. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, Leon, he's got primal magics in his hands. You'll be able to... Don't worry. <laughs> I'm trying to kill the big bee, dude. Alright. Shambles. Gondar looks like he's doing some work on the other side. Oh, fuck that up. side. I'm gonna do work on my side. It's yeah, I'm up to... Up. Fuck, I wasn't... I gotta keep track. Broken sword, first one. Hit. Eight Man, piercing. That's a dead bee. Unarmed strike, 11. Uh, that's a miss. And another unarmed strike, 14 to hit. That's two key points so far? Six blood. That's three key points so far. Okay, thank you. Uh, kill? Uh, two kills? Um, solid. Um, do you step forward or stay close to Benson? I'm staying near Benson. Okay. Um, Kevin? I cure wounds. I can maintain Hunter's Mark, right? Yeah. Hunter's Mark's concentration cure wounds is an instantaneous. Croc doesn't look uh, that then... by the way. I don't? No, you only got... Have... I have nine hit points. Yeah, out of twelve. What oh, look, no, yeah. No, out of thirty-something. Oh. oh, I, I see. Had, I, I had thirty-eight. Hold on. Your token's messed up. Uh, okay. I'm trying to fix it, but my computer is being difficult. Like, I think I should just be trying to shoot the big bad. Get him. So I could, if, if the dice are good, I could do a lot of damage here. Okay. So, Hunter's Mark, so I think that's Slayer's, what we're gonna... mark, Slayer's Mark as well? Sla yeah. Slayer's Prey. Sharpshooter Longbow. Here we go. Alright. It's a miss. <sighs> it's a miss. It's like a Zephyr Strike. Get that advantage. I can't do all of it. Yeah, it's ever sharp concentration. So it's Hunter's Mark. Alright. Yep. It goes to the Hell's Wasp at the bottom of its turn. It kind of like lets out a, a weird kind of sound. That kind of like sounds like a bass drop inside of the bridge. And you watch as all of the hornets, or the, the wasps, the bees, whatever they are, their little red gemstone in their forehead kind of glows again. And you watch as the ones that don't have their stingers regrow their stingers afresh. The Hell Wasp will fly backwards. Coward. Yo, don't, don't antagonize it. It third shambles words, so it flies back. I can't antagonize a beast. <laughs> it seems to understand language, actually, pretty weirdly. Well, screw him. Uh, Grok. No, stop. Grok is going to cast Thunder with Okay. Are you going to step forward before you do? Because the ones in front of you are all dead. No. I don't want... I can't take the uh, opportunity to... Okay, damn it. Stop paying attention to that one back there. <laughs> He's just like... Um, this is going to hurt. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm a beast <laughs> Alright. Um, so we're so, going to do it at low... Yeah, that's fine. It's a um, 15-foot cube, so it'll get those first... Six, it looks like. I want to do it. I want to do. You want to do it north? I can get six, and I can get I can get a seventh one. Hold on. Well, okay, so they're not actually. Yeah, they're they're kind of strangely placed. If you do, if you do the northern portion here, hold on. Let me set them into their spaces. More oh, okay, okay. If you go for like these squares here. That's the bulk that you'll get. That's the best bulk you'll get. Okay, that's fine. That's a total of eight of them. Okay. Fine. Constitution saving throws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, you don't add your rage damage to that, by the way. So okay, it's just global. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so. Okay, so it looks like you destroy about six of them and kind of break apart. They're like spindly bits, kind of like 
sliding off the side, their wings kind of like folding like paper, and their bodies just kind of dropping to the ground with a thunk. Um, two of them, however, seem to survive up on the north side. Um, these two um, up here. And then as my movement, I'm going to move back here and occupy Raya's space and go one behind Raya. Okay. Like, if, uh, you, if you step off the map, you cannot see into the board. So that's just a note there. You cannot cast from that position or see anything that's going on. So if that's the case... On my turn, I, I'm gonna move, I could come I'm gonna, back onto the yeah, map. That, that's fine. I'm moving you off the map so you can't see anything and make plans. Okay. Gotta heal. That's fine. Um, all right. This one in the back, did it die, or is it still going? It's still hanging out. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so Grok runs behind Raya, and Raya, um, you're up. Can I still see the big one? Yeah, it's a tight site, but there's kind of broken up uh, honey wall, and then there's three of them that are floating between you and it. 19 to hit with a ghost knife. Okay, so quick question: You are wielding. You dropped the rapier. You drew the bow. So the bow's yeah, in one hand. Throw, throw everything on the ground. I don't even care. Okay, draw the. Nothing dagger. works. Bonus action: ghost knife action throw. Got it. Um, Nineteen hits. And seven seconds. Okay. And slowed by ten feet. Yeah, you kind of see its wings kind of, <clears throat> kind of become a bit more stuttered in their flutter. Um. Bit of stutter in the flutter. Stutter um, your flutter. Waspy time. No, not the bees. Uh, I'm moving some of these off of the board. Sorry. Buzz, buzz, buzz. That should put you guys in the mood. Oh yeah. Buzz, buzz. Oh wow, we had another NPC we forgot about too. Oh yeah, but he Slip wasn't back. He wasn't coming to any fights like this. <laughs> he he, Ryan and Taylor are just help, they're keeping the elk alive. Well, t is they got, like, they got their team elk. Taylor is right. Ryan ran out to help the elk. And uh, Slickback is just like, yeah, I'll keep tending the fire. <laughs> um, it is it is a bit smoky in here, but it, since you've left it, the smoke has dissipated quite a bit. It's not going perfectly streamlined uh, into the hole. All right, Stings. I'm going to just pulverize Gondar here, I think. One, two, three, four, five of them. But why? You're the only one doing damage to any of them. No, no. I that killed two. Oh. <laughs> no, no. no I, <laughs> I just missed. So three hits. Because your AC is lower than 20, right? No. Give yes. me constitution saving throws. Three of them, please. Oh, get thick. Oh, mm. oh flack. It's, wow. it's pretty good. So it's you're only taking... It. Looks like 13 piercing damage. Ow. Are your electronic dice heavier on one side? Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's really good at clicking. So it's I th guess. 32 poison, half would be 16 poison. What's the total? Um, 13 plus 16. 29. Oh, I'm still down, even with all those. All right. Help me, Jesus. Kathunk. And uh, the Wasps against Shambles. Four. Correct. Okay. A lot luckier. It looks like all the good went for uh, Steve. Um, I think the highest I got was a 14. All miss. Yeah. Huh. Chody. How about that? Their attack's uh, only a plus five. I mean, I'm surprised I rolled that many over 20. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to chill touch uh, Mama back. Okay. 26. Hits. Crit. So with that, do we roll again? How do we do crits? Click on the I damage. 
11 and 13. So it'll actually be plus 16 because you maximize critical damage. So 11 Sweet. and 16 is 27. 27. You send out your spectral oh, man. across the field of combat. You watch as it kind of enters into the um, creature's head and kind of grasps. And then you watch as its head kind of like twists and then it just drops. And you see all of the wasps' heads, the bright, bright red light that's kind of like flickering, kind of just starts shining really bright at this point. Oh, uh, they're going to blow. And they all turn their attention to Benson. Well then. Condor. Uh, second action, mage shield, mage armor. You know, get second action, you turkey. As I'm passing out, I look at Benson and I just say, that still only counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gondar, uh, death saving throw. Hey! Oh, no, not that. Yeah, you do not get, it's a natural 20 roll, I think. Let me double check that roll. Right. I'm sure it is. I don't know why there's a mod attached to it. I just hit the, the shortcut on the character sheet. If your roll is a 10 or higher. Yeah, what the hell? If you roll a 20 on the d20, yeah. Okay, specifically worded that way. All right, all right. Um, that's Gondar. Shambles. Uh, gonna have to kill some bees going for my friend here. Eight. Not today. Thirteen. That'll, that'll work. Seven bludgeoning. Dead bee. Let's burn the last key point. Crit. That'll work. Other doesn't matter. Again, crit damage is always maximized. Um, so right. Another dead bee. All right, Kevin. I'm going to heal Gondor. All right. Be healed. Nine back. Nice pun, and I get back up. <laughs> All right. Um. The wasps is dead. Seven. I don't mean to have the Slayers thing check. Croc is up. Yep, I'm going to cure wounds since nobody else doing. Um, so I <laughs> get two rage points back. You get nine uh, healing. You can always I know. check off the rage. Um, and uh, you would have actually been out of a rage uh, when you ran away like a coward. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, and then, yeah, I think, I, I, yeah, I guess that's my turn. Fair enough. Right. Nice to have the bee in front of me. That'll work. I use a ghost knife. Yeah. That'll work. 14. Uh, sneak attack to Jason it's you. Yeah. And it goes to them. The, uh, Four that hit um, Gondar drop out of the air and just hit the ground. Slowly, kind of just looks like they're just slowly dying. These ones look like they are uh, devoid of their stingers. The stingers still being in Gondar's body. <laughs> the one that missed you is the one that's lived on forever and ever, and it's just gonna uh, it's just gonna take the disengage action and fly the fuck out of here. Quick brainstorm. These da- would these stingers make good daggers? No. Darn. <laughs> We had to take him out. No survivors. <laughs> that one, it flies, it flies, and it it, it, it it disengages and flies up onto the, uh, the the roof of it. It's getting out of here. I'll get him. <laughs> See that this is a lot. There's literally one of these bees left. Uh, Chody, you're up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and touch it, too. All right. Reach out and touch. 25. Bee. You can't not kill it. 13. You would have killed it even if it had max hit points. You slam it down with your bitch slap of chill touchy re. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like all of the bees are quite dead. Uh, the massive one kind of just laying there, kind of uh, bleeding out um, from the ghost knife cut and uh, the wounds it took. You can see that its fiery blood seems to be kind of burning the, uh, the wood of the um, uh, the, chain, the, the bridge. Um, and yeah, a bunch of dead bee carcasses and um, weird honey uh, comb. What'd you like to do? We should try to put that fire out. Get that honey. Put, put the fire out, though. Do you attempt to put the fire, the blood fire out? 
Yeah, uh, water skin. I don't know. Okay. Anything else I might have? Don't yeah. touch it. You pour the I'm water not touching it. <laughs> you pour the water onto it, it kind of pops and sizzles, and then it does absolutely kind of mix to a point where it no longer burns the wood. You saved it. Good. Mark. All right, that's Zach. Uh, Andy, what are you doing? Oh, staying outside. Okay, you got it. Well, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna run back inside. You go last is what I'm saying. Steve. Okay. Yeah. Um, you I said know. these these honeycomb human shaped honeycombs. It looked like they were there was like something pushing on it. Or is that the bees coming through? The bees came through. Yeah, yeah. It kind of okay. fell off the wall because there's actually railings here. Here, I'll show you. Um, they were closed off with the beehiveiness, um, but when they started piercing through. Yeah. Survivors. It's a honey river. It's like a, it's like a covered bridge. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna just look, for, search for any combs that look like they might be full of that good shit, that honey. Yeah, lots of them are filled with honey. Um, but as you can tell, it seems that the honey seems to be generated, or at least in part um, sustaining, or or not sustaining, holding. Um, the remnants of human bodies. Yeah, it's people honey. It's pretty gross. Um, like, I'm sure there's people who would, would buy this, but, like, I feel like the morally correct thing to do would be almost to, like, bury the honey or, like, just let it in the river. Cause Burn the whole from, thing down. It's made, wow. from, it's made from people. Wow. You really want to sell that? Grok pretty looks at... Uh, 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 <laughs> A Gondor is like, well, okay, he shakes his head like, oh, I'm surprised. Nice. That's like the morally righteous thing to do. Like, yeah, it's, we, we, honestly, like the people who would buy this would probably be those cultists that we saw. As, like, <laughs> and like, I don't think we're on speaking terms with them. Yeah, I'm I sure so. No, we could, we could be. Actually, when I say that out loud, I want to keep some of the honey because I... I kind of want to find those cultists again. Uh, this could be a good just... way to bridge that gap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. shakes his head. Do you want to investigate it and kind of like figure out what the characteristics of it are, or why it might be different than regular honey? Do you taste it at all, or? Oh no, I'm not eating. That's gross. But yeah, like in like anything noticeable just from it, like visually or I guess the smell. But I'm not going to put any in my mouth. That's nasty. I'll taste it for you. Okay, someone who can actually taste. Um, it's <laughs> maybe required to figure out what it does. <laughs> I will taste it. I'm going to. I'm going to want to study it and taste it. Very, very sweet. And you can actually taste kind of a um, uh, a very nourishing element to the uh, this liquid. Um, make another Arcana check. You did kind of try to Arcana it when you didn't have the substance in hand. Um, but now that you have it in hand, it might be easier for you to figure out. Uh, 20. Okay, so this is what is known as mellification. So um, you know that the natural way for mellification to be formed, this seems to be a very unnatural way for mellification to be formed, but mellification is uh, when a human or a humanoid creature um, is mummified um, by imbibing and then drowning in honey. Uh, the body, basically, all of the cells and all of the content of the body becomes like a uh, honeycomb um, and can be consumed. Um, you know that old-style mellification was done mainly by the Vitali people uh, prior to uh, the reign of the demon princes, um, and mellification was sought after as a very highly prized um, uh, substance for uh, curative purposes. Um, it, like moon milk, can be used as an ointment on wounds. Uh, however, its effect is a bit more immediate. Um, if applied during, uh, as an action um, to a wounded creature, um, the creature regains uh, 2d8 uh, hit points upon application. And if it's consumed um, during a short rest, uh, a free uh, hit dice can be spent. A hit dice without spending a hit dice. Um, I would like to uh, go over to Grok and say I know that you are not happy with uh, the way this is created. <laughs> but, uh, don't let these people die in vain. Let them help you with the last action of their life. And I try to add some of it to his wound. Oh, nice. 
Great. Uh, okay, Benson, I, you know, you've, you've, you've helped me. Can we dress Grok up with Blastoise and fill him full of this honey? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking he should wild shape into a, into a brown bear and then go to town with the... I was thinking I could back that wagon over here. We could fill that barrel with the stuff. Yeah, that too. Let's so do the morally should... gray thing. We'll bear it. We'll, 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 as much we'll as liberate we half of it and keep the other. Should uh, I roll 2d8 or should Chris? There's a, there's Why don't you roll it, Chris? Go there, ahead. There's plenty of it. If you want an exact a number of uh, doses Ten. of mellification that's present here, um, it's about 20. Just roll around in it. I mean, if you want to give me another dose, that would be awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I will give you as much as you need. I'm here to help the group. Um, I want to make sure that these people aren't, their lives aren't wasted. Like when he said that, he wasn't being stupid. He was very much being serious. Oh, like, and, use these in a good way. And sorry, I apologize. Uh, I, I, I'm getting the wording typed out here, but it's a recently wounded creature. So if you don't use it very shortly after a wounding, like a damage that's taken, um, then uh, it can't be used in that damage recovery way. For now, just do the 2d8 plus whatever stuff. I'll have the exact wording for future uses of the mellification. Okay? So, so, so we've used two uses of it then. That's fine. How many so we're essentially pulled? walking away with a jar of healing liquid. I will 20. use one as well for me. There's 20 total. Like, is that. Will that fit in our barrel? Will we have a keg of honey? Yeah. You can put it in the. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, it sounds that's, like it. That's a perfect that's use awesome. for the keg. Yeah, good idea, Zach. Yep. Okay. Back of the wagon up. Is Talus okay? Did everything yep. resolve itself back They here? killed okay. the bees. They didn't take any damage. Wow. The elk They're good at this. Backward? What? The elk? The elk. He's backing the wagon up. Yeah. So the honey was made from people. Are there any, like, remnants of, like, uh, not, like, bones, but, like, belongings of people that may have been shoved into these combs that were that fell out or before they were shoved in doesn't look you know like there's any kind of gear or item reef that seems to be present it seems like they were um, put into their state um, in a very uh, natural um, fashion they were they, wow they were abducted when they were nude or <laughs> they were torn out of any garments or clothing that they were wearing and brought Probably bathing in the river, bees come along, abduct you. It's a hard life out here. Yep. You've seen it a thousand times. <laughs> yeah, it's an everyday occurrence. The town was full of orgies. <laughs> That's why everybody ran away from it. <laughs> Somebody had a weird So they're all naked in these honeycombs. <laughs> yeah, speaking of that town. Oh, yeah, speaking we, of that we could, we, we could cross the bridge and go to Mordor, or we could call it a night. Gross, the bridge is sticky. Uh, Shambles, I had mentioned to you that um, you were looking for your identity. Um, we could search the town hall of Mortis for like any records. I don't know if that would help you at all. But... Any leads I could find, I'll follow. Yeah, we'd... it's all good. Anything valuable about the corpse or carapaces? Of the bees, the queen seems to be very strange. The carapace is very hard. Um, the plating might be worth something to um, an alchemist or uh, an armorer. What about her? You said her things were like swords. What about those? Not very strong. Outside, yeah, not very strong outside of the fact that they're attached to her weird limbs. Someone will help me. I'll load it onto the wagon. Unless I'm. Is it still burning? Is it still like uh, you poured enough water? Going to you kind of poured the water into its body to kind of like quench the blood. Um, it doesn't seem to be burning anymore. Let's load it into the wagon to, behind the barrel. Call this a win. Yeah, we can always, now that the bridge is liberated. We can always come back, search Mortis. If you guys want to like go back to Mutis and I don't know, collect collect yield rewards. We liberated the bridge. I think the Curials will be happy with that. We can find the foreman at the logging camp. Tell him he can get his men back to work. I'm sure he'll be happy. But... Is there anything else to see on the bridge? 
There's no like normal honey or anything. No, it's all the honey that's like uh, present is the darker matter honey is um, okay. recoverable because it's more a bit more solid, less viscous. The honey that's around it is a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more watery than typical honey. Uh, these creatures' honey seems to be kind of focused in the content of the humanoid portion, and then outside of that, it's a little bit more uh, watery. Uh, with his super cool arcana check, the reason why that is uh, Chody is when the in normal mellification, what typically happens is it's kind of a reverse osmosis. The water content of the person goes into the honey, and then the honey goes into the person creating a solid for the person and a less uh, viscous uh, honey on the outside. Gross. Uh, <laughs> Pretty gross. But an actual thing that might have happened in our real world. Yeah, and these things happen. Is there wax? Yeah, there's wax. Is the wax valuable at all? Uh, the wax seems to be very crumbly. Um, it doesn't seem like it's uh, something that is very recoverable. And if you try and kind of test it to um, uh, a flame, um, it melts very quickly. Uh, like it's very malleable by heat. So not very good for a candle. Correct. It's not normal beeswax. If it was, yeah, grab that shit up. It's super good. But it's not. Okay, so let's go ahead and move back to the big map. We've got about 20 minutes here. Let's see what we can do. Um, I heard some talk of people interested in maybe going to Mortis. Um, I heard some talk of people saying heading back to Moodis. What's the plan? One guy said both of those. Oh. Yeah, I was just pitching ideas for the group. Well, I appreciate you. How are we feeling adventure-wise? Is everybody capable still, or do we need a rest? I'm touched. I, I'm pulling yeah, stingers out of my arms, but I said I could I could use like a power nap, like an hour. Power nap. I'm good. I'm alright. I wouldn't mind checking out Mortis then. Okay. Uh, I've got one for, for Mortis. Mortis is fine. Mortis sounds good. We can. It's right there, so might okay. as well. You cross the bridge, and you can see that between the bridge area and where you presume the town is, based on uh, map and location, there's a lot of farmland, but it appears to be overrun um, and with high grass, and um, it's the high grass is kind of intermixed uh, with what you'd expect to see from a farm field. Like the farms were kind of left in state. Uh, you can see that the farmhouses look like they are kind of broken about um, in shambles. Uh, as you kind of look to uh, one of them, you can kind of see a couple of small humanoid creatures kind of look to you and then run into the farmhouse, scared. Um, but as you're kind of making it past that same uh, farmhouse, you can see the town of Mortis. It looks like it is nothing more than a bunch of old, broken down houses. Um, kind of in a small villagey kind of square. Let me get that map. Um, let me try and get that map. Hmm. It's too much time passed for me to slap some honey on my arms. If you're taking a short rest, you can slap some honey on your arm. Oh, for short rest, I'll just roll a hit die then. Comboing it with Moon's Milk. Are your oh, hit yeah. dice D4s? Wait, why are my hit dice D4s? Because you haven't changed them. Yeah, Did you never reset it? Just click on the D4 and you can change it to the right number right from that. Roll 20 reset a while back. You had to change it manually. My goodness. 
They You're summer. a fighter, right? Should be D10. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, if I oh yeah, I still have a thing of moon. So I'll, I'll do that. What did what the moon milk lets you maximize your hit dice? Maximize Correct. one spent hit dice. Yeah, well, we'll do that in the first. Did it already. It's a D4. Hey, no, it's still a D4. Just, just Why is it one. doing that? Whoa. Just changed it. Hold on. Gondar. No, don't change it in there, you dirt. Change it on there. Now do it. Oh, you're so oh, Dirk. <laughs> you Dirk. That'll be 12, and then another one. Alright, that should be okay. Alright. Okay. So as you approach the town proper, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like I said, you can see that it's in shambles. Uh, looks like there is an old well that's kind of just set it with tepid water. Uh, there's standing pools of water from the rains before. Um, you're entering it from the west side. Um, so as you're entering in, um, you can see that there is the remnants, the outline, kind of foundational structure of a building to your right side. And it looks like there is a um, half a building to your left side. I'm going to go ahead and move you to the map. Hold on a second. Let me try and do this. One second here, sorry. All right. And did it move? There it goes. Ooh, I like this map. Good job. Which building did the humanoids run into? This one, that was a bit ways out. It was a farmhouse outside. Did you want to inspect that and see what was going on there? I don't know if I already passed it. I don't care anymore. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, it uh, looks like a shitty, ripped-up fucking house. Um, and houses. Um, it looks like the uh, building straight ahead of you might have been some sort of tavern. Uh, this building here. Uh, looks like this might have been some sort of general store, perhaps. Um, yeah. Is this like have any of you ever been to Mortis before? Do you go check it out? Stay together, Grok says. No, I want to check out the general store, see if there's anything salvageable. Sure. You go to the general store, it looks like it's been completely ransacked. Um, uh, looks like there's literally nothing of note uh, or substance. Go ahead and make an investigation check just to be thorough. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I forget how I do things. Okay. You managed to find a small um, lockbox. Um, it kind of set in a brick that you... C is off when you first pop in the room, but you can see how most people wouldn't notice it. And you kind of move the brick aside, and there's like a small lockbox. And when you pull it out, shake it, kind of sounds like it has a sound of coin clatter, clink in it. Um, it isn't locked, um, despite it being called a lockbox. You manage to open it up, and inside there's That's a chain. Oh, yeah, silly. <laughs> they thought the brick would hide it. Um, there's a total of uh, three platinum, 18 gold pieces. And a single diamond worth 100 gold pieces. I'm going to pocket those. Okay. Now, as you're approaching that way, you'd also note that there is a sewer grate that seems to be on the northern side of the uh, the well. Rock like sewers. <laughs> All right. That's Zach. Uh, Andy, Grok went with uh, Shambles? Yep. And uh, same is true for Chody uh, Benson, right? 
Okay. Yeah, not too terribly much um, of note uh, besides the lockbox there. Go ahead and move to, uh, let's do Kevin. What's Leon doing? And just imagine you have your elk with you. I'd be making sure the elk's all right, given that it was fighting bees without me. Uh, if it's okay, then we're tending to the wagon, making sure that the honey is stored, ready to go when we're rolling. Okay. I'll let these guys, like, investigate the houses and stuff like that. I'd just be, like, watching. Well, that'd be about an hour past the fight. So it, it did sound like we kind of jumped from place to place. It was a little bit of a walk to get to where we're at. So as you're arriving in town, you're just basically holding a secure point, staying on the wagon, keeping, a, you know, a arrow in hand just in case, and watching out as everybody moves to different buildings. Yeah, sounds about right. Base camp. Sounds like your role in the entire campaign. I love it. It's a very strong position to play. Gondar, um, what would you like to do? Um, I prom I told Shambles I would look search for town records for him. I'll take my Kevin's watching the cart, then can I have my dude with me or just say he's with me? Yeah, that's fine. There's so not gonna there's not gonna be any combat here, so yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> so, oh, okay, full like, we got, Wonderful. Yeah, full disclosure. This is I'll, just investigation. So I will investigate the uh, the inn specific because okay. um, it's the largest building. Specifically, looking for any town records, documents that might have talked about who lived here or what the purpose of this town. Was. As you enter in, you very quickly kind of reach for your daggers because you see that there's a figure kind of on or at the uh, the bar, kind of crouched over, cloak hood up. Um, there's a, t a tankard in his hand. Uh, but he doesn't seem to be moving like he hasn't noticed you. So he ha he's moving like he has not seen me? He hasn't moved at all. It doesn't seem like he's noticed you. Um, I'll kind of keep my daggers out, but I'll kind of, through squinted eyes, just say, Well met. He doesn't respond. He doesn't move. He doesn't seem to be moving at all. I poke him with my dagger. It's like you do. He kind of falls off of the uh, stool and hits the ground and looks up at you, you can see that his face is kind of just dour, saddened, and like not, you know, really moving. Um, his skin's kind of taut to his face, like he's been dead a while, maybe a few months or a month or so. He has a number of pustules on his face that have kind of burst and ruptured with kind of a purple ichor. And uh, his teeth are kind of like loose inside of his gums and you can see the same kind of purple fluid kind of inside of the gum line to the teeth. And he uh, looks very dead. Uh, gross. Um, so does it look like there that are... sickness is what killed him? And you're not an Osirian native born, right? No. Okay. Um, yeah, the sickness appears to be what might have claimed him here. Yeah. Gross. Um, I don't want to rifle through his body because it might be contagious, you know? There's there's all these viruses out these. Um... Mm -hmm. I'll just keep searching out for documents, like look going through drawers or anything. Okay, Ryan. What are you doing? Just walking down the street. Okay. Pretty calm place. The wagon tracks are still, you know, relatively, um, you know, placed. Uh, looks like a lot of traffic um, headed south, from what you can tell, uh, about a month or so ago, just based on the, uh, the digs in the, um, the road. Benson, you move to the building next to the uh, general store? Yep. Looks like it's a small house, uh, possibly um, attached to the um, chamber uh, or the, the general store or something to that effect. Uh, when you go inside, there's kind of a smell of lingering death present here. Like the door hasn't been left open. There's no uh, cracks like you broke a seal when you open the door. Um, it smells foul. Uh, but the uh, living room area pretty quiet, undisturbed. Looks like no one's been in here. Um, some relics of uh, home decor nature kind of set inside of shelves. Uh, plates, um, some of them silver, not too bad looking. Um, and there's a set of stairs that goes up to a second floor in this chamber, or in this house. I'll check out the second floor. On the second Can I floor, follow him? Yeah, yeah, Benson is right after you. Uh, you I don't up, like to. You head up to the second floor. There are two doors on a landing at the top of the steps. Um, it's just kind of like a very sharp landing. The stairs kind of go up and then right onto the landing. Um, and uh, both doors appear to be closed. One of them appears to have a lock. Uh, 
Uh, I'll open the one that does not have a lock first. Okay. Uh, inside, uh, you see a small um, bed. Uh, looks like a child's room. Um, it looks like it's been completely emptied of contents. Like someone basically opened the drawers and rifled everything out of them. Um, but based on downstairs appearance, you presume that whoever did this was the person who lived in this room. Um, it looks like all of their uh, accoutrements have been removed uh, from the place. Okay. I'm going to go to the locked door and I will look at Shambles and ask, uh, would you mind? Uh, am I able to break the lock? Yeah. Um, in actuality, uh, you find that the door is not locked, it just has a lock. Uh, ah. <laughs> you open up the door. Clever. It, it makes a. Me too. <laughs> and uh, when you peer inside, you can see a um, a bed with two bodies in it. Um, similar um, desiccant level and uh, also similar symptoms to the man I described in the tavern. Uh, next to them, uh, next to each side of the bed, are tins. Uh, tin buckets that look like they're filled with sick, overfilled with sick. Um, there are a number of different uh, pulses on the bedsides and candles that look like they've been burned down to their stubs. All right, say over to my shoulder. Uh, stay where you are. I don't get sick. Benson? Search the room. Benson, from your distance, and you've been living in uh, the Buddhist region for a while, so you're pretty familiar with Osirian lore. Go ahead and make me a history check. Um, just curious what I need to with my, uh, researcher. Um, researcher is your background feature? Uh, background, yes. Um, so that's when you're studying it. So if you were to go back and okay. study it back in the libraries at Moodis, you wouldn't have any problems. Okay, I'll roll. Okay, 24, 24 is uh, high enough for you to identify the telltale signs of a sickness known as the Red Death in Osiria. Um, basically, any uh, creature who uh, acquires the Red Death starts to become sick with a fever-like condition. Then they start to uh, receive um, uh, pustules, um, bobos, uh, as they're known, um, that fill up with blood and then pop um, on their own. Um, the blood, once it dries to a point, becomes uh, it becomes evident that the sickness is present, and they become more it becomes more purple. Uh, the sickness is known as the Red Death because of the initial per, uh, popping and bursting of the bobos, uh, bobos, um, bubonic is the word I'm trying to go for there. Uh, Red Death is very similar in kind to real life bubonic plague. Uh, is it something that we would? need to worry about for catching right now being here um if it's fresh yes if it's not this place is probably not going to be a problem the uh the condition uh it only lives in just states inside of living creatures if there are no living creatures present over a matter of a few days it will die out i let shambles now and just uh go about looking at the room okay Anything valuable in the medicines they have here? Um, not particularly, no. Um, it looks like, uh, upon close inspection, it does seem like there's a lot of uh, material here. Uh, the only thing that catches uh, Benson's eye in particular is a vial of snake oil. You can make a fortune. They wouldn't sell to anybody, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pocket it. Okay. John, I'd like to check out the grate. Okay. You check out the grate. Uh, inside there is uh, what appears to be the remnants of an old sewer system. Um, based on what you're looking at, it looks like uh, this town mortis might have been built on the foundations or base of a possibly larger city at an earlier point in Osiris history. Um, it looks like it's probably about a 15 foot drop down and you can still kind of hear the slow rush of water um, those of you that are inside, you would note that the ensuite uh, bathroom in the, um, uh, the master bedroom where you found the dead body, um, it appears to have running water still. Can I pop, pop the grate off? Yeah, easy enough. Um, 
I would look to um, who's nearby. Uh, um, well, Rye is passing the fountain. Just a quick kind of look to it. It does look like the water's stagnant, but you can see a bit of motion coming from the weird statue in the center, which is kind of covered with a bit of dirt and uh, grime and also calcification. You notice that the water is trying to eke through where like the hard water is basically formed kind of bubbles of uh, thick stone around where the water normally comes out. I'll chip away at it with a dagger. The water starts to flow a bit more readily and kind of stir the sickening water in the, the bit so it looks like it's flowing quite normally now. And I'm going to yell back to... Uh... Yeah, I can't Leon. His name. Yeah, Leon. Make a camp. You can call me in 24 hours. And I sit down and commune with the dead. Okay. Yeah. We're just setting up camp here? Yep. All right. Is there a place for me to secure a rope so I can go down into the um, sewer? The fountain. Fountain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You descend down into the sewer. The sewer looks like it heads north uh, a bit. Um, but uh, it looks like, uh, as you're kind of peering out that way, it looks like there's a very large grate uh, structure that's been placed on the northern side, kind of where the barrier of the town would be. And if you head south, uh, the waterway actually diverges about where the fountain is, and you can see that there's kind of like a bevel to the ceiling right above you where the fountain would be, uh, presumably the bottom of the bowl of the uh, fountain above. Um, there appear to be water pipes, Kind of attached to the ceiling that connect to the um, the fountain, and those water pipes run the length of the path there. But like I said, at where that point hits, it forks. One path, the larger path, goes all the way south, like it's directly underneath the road, and the other path seems to diagonally sharp shoot straight down, as if it were heading straight to where that statue is. The statue. Yeah, so basically, let me let me draw it for you real quick. Hold on. Effectively. Right, got it. Let me make it blue so it looks like waterworks. It's full SimCity mode. Does it look like anything of interest uh, that can be explored besides just being a sewer or water if you want to continue down one of the paths let me know yeah um i'm going to continue down towards the statue okay you start to see that there's a bit of light kind of eking through uh the ceiling when you get to that point you notice there's a large tear in the stone uh, above you kind of breaks through the uh, tunnel way several bricks are kind of laid out but the water still runs through um, and just near there um, basically directly underneath the statue, um, if you had to venture a guess, uh, there is a door made out of steel. Uh, looks like it's locked. Could I try to open it up? Um, by what means? Strength. You can give it a shot. How dare you talk so what would you like me to do? Up. Go ahead and make a strength athletics check. 19. 10, actually, because you have disadvantage. Um, you don't seem to have a method to get a hold of any kind of part of the door. Straight shoving it doesn't work. Um, brunt for, uh, brute force it does not seem to be the effort that's going to uh, get you through the door. Okay. Um, it's not that he doesn't have thumbs. It's, it's, <laughs> there's nowhere to kind of get a hold of. <laughs> okay. Um... But in my sense, though, is that the door leads up into the statue, yeah? Um, no, no, not that it goes up into the statue, that the door is directly beneath where the statue is located. And which, okay, but there, so it seems like the, the, the door would lead beyond the statue. So. Straight to hell, because it's got like a statue of a demon sitting on top of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, um, so Grok would then go back out where he came in, climb up, gather up his rope, and uh, tell Raya that if he's interested, there's a door that he might be able to unlock. He seems to be very focused and intent on what he's doing. Uh, 
It's almost as if he's in an elvish trance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that said, uh, next session will begin um, with a kind of regrouping. Shambles and Benson, you'll come out and see Grok. Uh, Gondar, you'll find nothing in the uh, inn and tavern. Come out and see Grok. Um, and Benz, or, and uh, Raya kind of strangely doing something new. Um, and we'll kind of pick up from there. Sound good? Cool. Sure. sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream. I'll get you experience for those bees uh, here in a moment. And thanks for watching. Apparently a bunch of bots jumped in and wanted me to become famous. Um, yeah. Good, good option, but I'm good on that. I, I don't you really can buy want... followers, primes, and viewers. Oh, wow. <laughs> and viewer. Oh, wow. No, I'm good. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you robots.